basically the idea is let's go to tier maker we have our list of how people are feeling in the patch and what blizzard did this week was they made some changes not many uh, among other things but we're basically just going to react to the changes that were posted this week and then we're going to do this every week or every time they post changes and we will just do an update stream and what that involves in if a change is like super bad it could take a class like pretty low if a change is super good it could bring them way back up and we're just going to keep track of all of this and make sure we're we're staying on top of it so let's go to these changes Okay, Heart of the Wild has been updated. So now additionally reduces the cast time of balance spells by 30% and increases their damage done by 20, and it was 30. And it generates one combo point per two seconds while in cat form and increases physical damage by 20% was 40. They nerfed the damage of, like, the healer or tank specs going Heart of the Wild, but they, I mean, they, they, they technically buff the damage, right? It's going to make it just better to play, I think. It's a Guardian nerf. How so? so? Here's what I'm assuming. I'm not super... I mean, wait, I can tell what it is right now. So Heart of the Wild right now. Okay, yeah, so it's basically... Yeah, 30... Okay, but the thing is, is when you're playing off-spec cat and you swap over, you're, like, starved on combo points and energy. So you getting free combo points is going to make that feel a lot better. Uh, when you are going balance form, you having the reduced cast time is going to feel a lot better. Not to mention that it is obviously a damage increase for both these things. So Heart of the Wild is just, in general, a buff to Heart in, in its fun and power. Oh, Guardians were just popping it for damn. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. In, when, in the raid build, right? When you're playing Moonfire. So you basically just popped this to just get magic damage increase. Yeah, but that's like fucking lame, you know? Like, oh, what a little... Like, first of all, it, even in a raid, like magic damage isn't even... I don't even think it's the majority of your damage. It's like supplementary. And then you're adding that by 30%. That's fine. So it's a nerf from 30 to 20 barely, but it makes it to where you're actually shapeshifting. It's better. It's a good change. That is a... You know, obviously, if you're playing a class where, like, you were using this just for an offensive cooldown, which is, like, not how this is intended whatsoever, but it still will be one, kind of, I think it's perfectly fine to make this more like what it's supposed to. I think it's a good change, for sure. Although, I do wish that Heart of the Wild was a little better, like, just overall. Like, it's a, it's a capstone, right? I mean, I guess the capstones of the class tree are not super powerful. It's kind of the whole point. Like, Nature's Vigil obviously got nerfed a lot. And then if you buff Heart of the Wild too much, then it, like, kind of defines things. It, like, makes Resto Druid damage either, like, way too good. But I think that it would actually work for Resto because Resto, with the Nature's Vigil nerf, to compete with the healers that are doing the most damage while healing right now, Resto Druids actually need a lot of help. Resto Druids actually did very competitive damage, but only because Nature's Vigil was 30 seconds. Their damage got nerfed fucking crazy in a raid. Uh, I'm obviously not counting doing damage actively. I mean, just damage while you're healing. It's by far the most important thing. So I feel like there actually would be a world for Resto Druid to want to actually play Heart of the Wild and get like pretty good value from it. So I like that. But I think Heart of the Wild is really hard to balance for uh, the DPS specs. So like if you're using these and you're using it to heal or you're using it to tank or whatever, that can very quickly become like out of hand, like too strong. I mean, this was kind of the case for years, but like Moonkins in a raiding guild, really good raiding guild, were like the ultimate trump card. Like you could... Uh, actually, it's kind of what enabled uh, Method to 3-heal Ashara, if you remember that fight. Like, their Moonkins were just, like, off-healing machines. Mirez was playing Moonkin back then. And that's, like, a, where that's been really good. That hasn't had that same level of power for a while. I don't think Moonkins are thought of doing that. And and the idea... Okay, I want to hear what you guys think. Do you guys think Resto Druids, Guardian Druids... Or Resto Druids, Feral Druids, and Balanced Druids... Do you think it is cool for them to be able to press Heart of the Wild and be a actually strong tank not like you can take a melee or two like you could fucking tank a boss for 40 seconds if you wanted to do you think that's good i think it's cool there's like no one else in the game that can do that outside of like a die by the sword which is like you parrying and like maybe a demon hunter gets pretty lucky a little bit less this expansion i think it, i think it fucking works but at the same time it can also get like super broken right like now instead of you know oh well you're two tanking this fight could you one tank it yeah except for this one lineup which is crazy or this two or three lineups, and it's like, well, we have druids are meta right now, so we have a couple druids. We could just, couldn't we just have them all take one class tree point and taunt like one combo, and then now you can one tank, and then that's value. So like, it can get super OP, but I, 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 there's some line in between there where you're not one tanking with Heart of the Wild off druids, and it being better than it is right now. I don't know, just, just a thought. I think Heart of the Wild has been cooler in the past, is basically my point. Like there, there was a time too where like you could Heart of the Wild as, as like a bear druid in a raid. And it was actually, like, I think Heart of the Wild for Bear was one of the coolest design things ever. Because you could just go up to a fight, and, like, on the pull, you could Heart of the Wild and just fucking crank 
like do so much damage on the pull like in either form so it actually like made you a viable tank because you you need to like as a guardian druid you need to lean into their shape shifting and times when they've been weak in this game it would have been cool if their niche was oh when when we're off tanking we do the most damage of any other tank right most most tanks when they're not tanking they're still doing the same thing they're pressing this they're pressing that right like they're just still tanking but a druid has the ability to shapeshift i i always wish shapeshift is like a noticeable damage increase over staying in bear always i also think for healing so in used to pop part of the wild as a bear there's a few few tiers where this was true you could just like rejuve like you could just heart of the wild and just like rejuve people and it was a lot of healing like it was like a noticeable raid cooldown and you would easily trade you know 15 20 seconds of tank throughput on most fights to like blanket the raid in hots basically for free with like a cooldown I don't think it's it's not that strong anymore. So I I just I, I wish Heart of the Wild just had a little bit more versatility. That's all, and not not literally versatility, but yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, and now Flourish is a 60 second cooldown was 90 seconds, and their note was we're increasing the availability of Flourish as its peak power level has gone down significantly. They nerfed the absolute fuck out of this ability. Not only the tier set that goes along with it, but just I mean it's just a massive. Does anyone know the number? Like, before the cooldown change, wasn't Flourish nerfed by, like, 75 or 80% or something? Like, it's a fucking huge number. Yeah, it, se it seemed like they were doing two things when they nerfed Flourish. It seemed like Blizzard did not like that Flourish was that strong, and I think Blizzard really wanted people to start considering Incarn. It's not a coincidence that they nerfed the fuck out of Convoke indirectly via nerfing Flourish, and then they also chose that patch as the one to, like, really look at how Tree of Life works, right? The Incarnation spell. So... I assume this is still going to be absolutely horrific, but their design angle is, okay, now we want Flourish to line up with uh, one minutes. And that's a... I mean, that's pretty significant though, right? Like, I know you were getting a lot of value from it out of the Convoke and it's still overall nerfed, but I mean, they nerfed the cooldown of this by 30%, right? That's a, you know, if you were to use it on cooldown and everyone was always taking damage, which is not exactly how it works, you know, this that would be a significant buff. And, and that's also what druids do well. Like, druids, if, if you want to look... So there's a couple of classes that do this as healers, where they... A lot of times when you're adding a healer to a fight, you don't really need more HPS. You need more coverage, right? That's actually why a phase like uh, the first phase of Sarkareth, right? If you guys have done Sarkareth or watched it or healed it, you will know that, like, that is one of the hardest-hitting phases in, honestly... Maybe I can remember. Like, I I can't remember of another, like, just pure healing check phase like that. But you can two or three heal that phase. It's much more about HPS and not about coverage. There's two times in that, in that phase where your raid gets fucked. There's a couple of times where they'll get low from, like, you know, the bombs ticking down and the range are moving and stuff like that. But they're not really going to die. They're really going to die at the Glittering Surge at the end and the Mass Clear on the second Searing Breath. So if you have... I, I People have two healed it with any comp now, but if you you know, play like Restro Druid Mistweaver, for example, you're talking about two healers with a ton of coverage. And that makes something like that work. Druids are the coverage healer. That is their niche. If you want to bring a Druid to a raid, they... Uh, I think it's going to play a little bit differently now, uh, for sure. But I really like the idea of this being a shorter cooldown as far as, like, the design of Resto and kind of leaning into that. The question is, do any Druids, including Restro Druid, do you feel better about the patch now because of this flourish change? No. I don't even think you move up in the good changes row i think you stay exactly where you are you stay right where you were fire tier set change i don't think matters for them looks like it's just uh i don't know i don't know it's just uh, i doubt it's big all right miss weaver thing two set bonus no longer applies chi harmony on renewing miss jumps so this was like by far the most broken tier piece they are the number one class in feeling real good and they got a they got a little bit of a nerf here. I don't know how much it is. I'm actually what's cool is I've been away for a few days, so I'm sure the math lords have done the math. But this was like a 30% HPS increase or something beforehand. I'm assuming this nerfs the fuck out of it because where you were seeing the power come in was like kind of the infinite scaling amount of mists you could put out. But now that like the entire point of the tier piece doesn't spread like that, it's a fucking. I'm assuming this is big, but still probably yeah exactly. Still probably really good at mythic plus yeah. This set went down from 30%-ish to 10%, two and four piece. So Mistweaver, did did they get other changes too though? They did in 10.1.7. No, I know, no, I mean like recently, like did they get any major changes besides their tier being insane? Like when you guys were feeling real good, is that just because of your tier bonus? Or is that because like some other stuff happened and that was cool? Combination of both from tier, okay, so if you're a Mistweaver and you were feeling real fucking good, 
but now your tier was massively nerfed. I don't think 12 is 12% bad for a healing bonus. Like 12% would be like pretty, pretty mid for a DPS bonus, but DPS and healing are like totally different. And then like tanking is to dude, tank tier sets are actually fucking wild. Tank tier sets are actually fucking wild, man. They like, dude, a good DPS tier piece is like, oh, you do like 15, 20% more damage. That's like insanely good. A tank one is like, you you are infinitely more tanky and you do 20% more damage or something. Like the actual value is, would be like a DPS one saying you do 50%. It's like almost, like tier sets almost define the tank meta right now. I think it's like high and good changes now. Hmm, where does it belong here? Next to the dragon. Miss Weavers, who do you guys want to be next to? Who's your, who's your boy in good changes? You guys want to be next to... Enhance? Yeah, Enhance is a cool class. All right. Uh, Paladin Ret. So the Ret bonus was just like not super involved. It was, you know, they, they make your dot from casting Blade of Justice last a little longer and do more damage. But it was like, and your finishers do damage based on that thing being up. Extra damage. I didn't know if they ran the numbers on it. I think when I talked to Bolus, who's like a Ret theory craftsman, he's normally a huge do doomer. So, like, as I've talked to more and more people about their classes and shit, I have learned, like, how some people are. Some people are optimists, some people are, like, giga doomers, and then most people are, like, right in between. I've noticed Bolus is a huge doomer. So, if he put it in good changes, then that means that it's probably doing, like, real good. Let's see what these changes are, though. Divine Toll is now guaranteed to target at least one valid enemy with expurgation. Wait, what? I'm so confused why they fixed that. What was the, what was the weird interaction here? This certainly isn't pos super positive or negative. This just sounds like some kind of weird interaction or something wasn't working right, but that's fine. This is probably nothing. And then uh, fixed a few targeting issues that caused Wrathful Sanction to trigger multiple times on one Judgment cast. Okay, that's probably like a bug that they fixed. That's fine. And then fix an issue causing unintentional divine purpose and Imperial Empyrean power proc consumption. Oh, so probably some kind of weird interaction with those because Empyrean power makes the spender free just like divine purpose, but it would probably like consume both of them or something. Okay, that's a good change. Uh, I don't know exactly what caused that. Maybe it's like the new tier set or something. Oh, what was it? It could randomly not hit someone. It was a bug fix and it was quadratically scaling anyway. Okay. So I'm assuming that this doesn't change at all. I think they're just staying right where they're staying. Let's see. Priest, holy heal. So they just added heal. They feel like they missed... Uh... In most healers, they buffed the their single target healing by a decent amount. Like that's been a big complaint from healers, especially in Mythic Plus, is that spot healing just feels so shit. And it's like you have a cooldown and you live or you don't and you die. And they felt like heal needed to be added to that list of things they already had increased. So, cool. So, I don't, and I don't think that changes it. If I remember, where was Holy? Holy was an eh. Definitely, I don't think they would go into good changes. I also think that that might be better, but who knows. Uh, so, Shadow. Fixing an issue causing Death Speaker to reset the cooldown of Shadow Word Death to 10 seconds. Fix an issue causing Death Speaker to trigger the cooldown of Lockout for Death and Madness. And fix an issue. Okay, so this thing was just bugged as hell. Fix an issue causing additional Shadow or Deaths from a Drasil bonus to not trigger Psychic Link. Okay, so this doesn't really change anything though, because fix because this entire tier set was built on reading the tier set, reading the changes, and being like, this is how we feel about it. When people were reading that, they were not aware of these uh, like issues, so I doubt that we would move something up or down uh, based on issues that you didn't know existed when you initially said this is how you felt about it. Don't think that really matters. Rogue's Night Stalker damage bonus reduced to 5, 10% was 8 to 15. Elusiveness now causes evasion to reduce damage taken by 20% was 10. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So elusiveness is what you take instead of cheat death in the class tree, right? Usually what is the thing? It reduces damage taken by evasion, increases damage taken by 10%, reduces damage taken. And faint also reduces non-AOE damage taken by 20%. So it just buffs the evasion DR. Is that what they did? That's pretty good. I still think, I wonder how good elusiveness would have to be for people to not take cheat death. Uh, I don't think it's too far off. Cause like there's some fights where elusiveness makes a lot of sense. The, 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 okay, here's a big problem. Uh, the the pr rogues right now, I usually are like, they don't, sh they don't really faint until they cheat, right? Like you don't want to spend energy until you feel like you have to. Rogue is unkillable. Rogue, interestingly enough, is hard carried by cheat. Um, like, there are classes that are really tanky with cheat, but are not hard carried by cheat. Like, you could take cheat away, and they would still be pretty tanky. Rogue Rogue has actually been seen as this super, super tanky class for a long time only because of cheat death. Like, if you uh, watch them in progression, which, you know, that's what I do, they, they, they take a fair amount of damage because even even with faint, like, I don't know, they're, they're, just, they're, they're really not good at rot fights. 
Like they they get rotted harder than like anyone. Like way up there. Like uh, uh, there was a there was an old fight. Was it Gul'dan? It was Gul'dan where rogues like instead of having all the melee get one stack of the souls in the middle, you had rogues like both go to a super high level. They used defensive legendaries, which I think it healed you every time you pressed faint, and they played elusiveness so they could they could, you know, actually DR the dot with faint. That was the last time I remember this being like super useful in PvE, although I didn't play Rogue for a lot of years. So it's possible that it happened since then. I just wonder, I'm trying to think of a, how a raid fight would actually work now. Because like if you think about it, the reason why, and this is totally different than now, the reason why Rogues did that job on Gul'dan and Legion is because they were the best class at Rot. Like if you had to keep any DPS alive, it was going to be a Rogue. And now that's not true at all. You would take so many classes over rogues in that situation if that again that situation doesn't happen in a long time actually the closest that situation would have come to happening is the last phase of razageth the last phase of razageth would have been you would have done a night hold rogue thing instead of having a bunch of people soak like stacks you would have the tanks soak stacks and then you would have the rogues do it and you would just like it would be easier to heal two rogues than it would be to heal a bunch of the raid uh but that's just the game the rogues are just nowhere near as powerful as they used to be they also had crazy legendaries to, to allow them to do that but basically, the whole point of this thought is how good does elusiveness has to be to where there is a fight profile to where you would take this over cheat death because of its design. And I I think with the current strength of Rogue's defensiveness, I think it would have to be much stronger than this. I don't know if it's... Is it used in PV, PvP? Is, is elusiveness like a PvP thing? No, no, yeah. Fuck yeah. So I would say it needs to be a little bit better than that. I, I do like evasion being a, a DR though. That's kind of nice. What's the cooldown on evasion for Outlaw? Like, roughly 40 seconds historically, but like 30 right now. So, I mean, most classes in the game don't play with a cheat death. So, you know, rogues, it's possible to do that. Imagine you just get a 30 second bark skin and your faint now works on like dots you have. I actually think that's like, I'm just reading it. It's not too far off of being, being taken, at least for outlaw. But cheat is just, it's just so insane. Okay, Venom Rush's energy return reduced to 5 was 6. I believe that's the energy return function on the class where if a mob has a bleed on it and it has a poison, the bleed ticks refund energy, I think. So they nerfed the energy gain a little bit. Kingsbane damage nerfed. Internal bleeding damage nerfed. Oh, is it Mutilate's energy refund? Oh, I must have had that wrong. Where's Venom Rush? Oh, I, I don't even think it's a... Oh, here it is. Ambush. Oh, yeah, it is. Ambush and Mutilate Refriend 7 when using against the Poison. Oh, yeah, I had that wrong. Exsanguinate now is an energy... Uh, the passive version of Exsanguinate now is an energy threshold is 150, was 100, and consumes 4 energy was 8. To duplicate 25% of damage was 40. Wait, was this just cracked or something? Exsanguinate active now consumes 8 energy was 10, and then duplicate uh, 75%. Okay, so both of them got nerfed. Or I guess maybe it's consuming less energy, so maybe it's just a, a feel change. Oh yeah, there's no way to have the energy make sense. So they've, they've nerfed the energy consumption by half on the passive and 20% on the active. Elaborate planning has been removed. They removed it? Okay, so I haven't played Rogue in a while, but I did kind of like elaborate planning. It's 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 not really a maintenance buff. Okay, first of all, if you guys are really down with it to change, it's fine. The reason why I liked elaborate planning is it actually encouraged you to pool correctly, right? Like, if you just spammed on assassination, you would be shit with elaborate planning. But if you actually pooled properly you'd be way better at it so i don't i don't view this as a maintenance buff i i think yeah so it's kind of sad because this remove this absolutely removes skill expression i haven't played assassination this expansion it's possible that this expansion's energy economy it just like makes the class less fun to play because i it absolutely did not used to do that i think it made the class way more fun to play in the past because it challenged you more on an otherwise pretty easy spec i'm assuming this expansion they made the energy just way different than it's ever been, and I imagine that it's just annoying now rather than uh than cool. What do you guys think? What do you rogues think? You're gonna want to pool for Envenom anyway. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I guess like Envenom still exists, so you still want to play like that. So okay, if you still are encouraged to pool properly, and now it's just less annoying, then it's just objectively better. So it sounds like rogue. Yeah, rogues seem like they're saying like these are these are sick changes. Okay. Thistle team made energy pooling not important. How many charges of that do you get? It used to be in the bottom of the tree. Is it somewhere else now? Three charges of 100% energy or 100 energy master increased by this. One minute recharge, three charges. I mean, you, I mean I'm assuming you use like multiple of these in your open. What's, what's the gameplay loop of this? Do you just press this when you're dry or do you like use it in your cooldowns on purpose? I'm assuming you don't need it in lust. One minute in opener and then dry both when you're dry with shadow dance. Use it for damn. Use one in the opener then as needed for energy. Why do you use it in the opener? 
Oh, just for mastery increase. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, you're not going to be dry for, like, till the end of Lust anyway. So why not just get one on cooldown, you know? I think all the rogue specs use it in the opener for mastery and then for energy. Kind of bad design. I mean, if it was designed to just give you energy, you would just sit on cooldowns for a while. I think it's, like, kind of cool that you're incentivized to use it early in the pull. I'm assuming you just use it in, like, a shiv window. But that also means you have to be way less good at shiv. I don't know. I kind of... I don't know. I don't really... I don't know if I fuck with, with Thistle-T assassination. Because, like, that's that's the only... That was the only thing that was fun about assassination before, which is, like, shiv is coming up, and you had to have prepared for that. You need to have your dots up so you don't want to refresh them during your shiv, and you would want to go in with high combo points and energy. That was, like, the whole gameplay loop of the spec, so I feel like Thistle-T kind of makes that less fun. But also, I, I haven't played with it. Maybe it's really... It's good. I, I, maybe I'd like it. Okay, back to this. Okay, Outlaw. Marked for death no longer benefits from the cooldown reduction effect of Restless Blades. The tooltip would be updated to match a future PTR build. Interesting. Yeah, Marked for Death's always been a weird one. Super cool mechanic in certain parts of the game, and it's also just, like, crazy clunky. Also, I think Marked for Death is also really hard. Like, like as opposed to most things. Like, like playing Marked for Death correctly in a lot of scenarios is, like, kind of difficult. So, and it's just another bind, you know? What does it mean it benefited from the CDR of Restless Blades? So you would, like, Mark for Death, that target wouldn't die, but then you'd just be spamming Mark for Death as Outlaw. You'd just be fucking slamming that shit. Had, like, a 15-second cool. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that is so good. Subtlety. Secret Technique, Shadow. Okay, so I don't think anything moves here, right? No matter what, if you're getting reworked, you're feeling real good because your class is going to fucking own. Now, if we get closer to the end of the PTR and... This is like the first example of a recent rework being like gameplay bad. Then we'll we'll talk about it. But until we're much closer to that time, you've just got to be feeling real good. Cobalt buff, secret techniques, gore moths, bite damage, shuriken storms, energy cost increased 45, was 40. Yeah, cool. Shaman. Riptide's initial heal increased by 30%. Unleashed life heal increased by 40. Uh, these seem like really random changes, but they're just another thing to address the like stronger non-cooldown related like burst healing outside of your cooldown windows is all they're targeting there like no one really care i mean riptide's initial heal you like feel that more than you do other hots so actually I, I maybe that's like not as insignificant as i'm making it sound uh warlock demo imp gang boss has been redesigned summoning a wild imp has a 30 percent chance to summon an imp gang boss instead an imp gang boss deals 50 percent increase in additional damage and implosions from in Imp Gang Boss deal 50% increased damage. So, someone tell me... So, read the current tree? Okay, let's do this. Old one. Summoning a Wild Imp has a 15% chance to summon a boss. And then the Imp Gang Boss deals 50% additional damage. And when imploded, the Imp Gang Boss will summon a Wild Imp. So, it helped your, like, Imp economy. Okay, so now... Oh, they're just... I mean, they're just... Bro, the more and more I read this, this demo thing... I really think that they think demo locks are causing lag for everyone. That has to be what they're doing, right? Like, they've made so many changes to not incentivize you to have a million imps. And they're making the class less fun because the because of lag, I think. Like, you don't really see that many in a raid, but I bet Blizzard has determined or thinks that it's a huge cause of, uh, of lag. I mean, it kind of makes sense. If you're spawning, like, 50 imps, like, they're probably like, yo, what if that was 15? So now it still does the 50% increased additional damage. And then now the implosions will deal more damage, but you won't gain more imps from it. So I'm assuming Warlock players, you would have rather not had the implosion damage, and you would have rather had the imp come back out again, right? So one imp is 100% damage versus 50% more implosion, so it's just a nerf. Okay, is it enough of a nerf? I'll let the Warlocks decide. Is it enough of a nerf to make another thing below just a... Just a what do you think? Is it a big enough change to, to make... Okay, I'm seeing yes. Holy shit. That's crazy. Somehow it got worse. Somehow it got worse with Demo. Damn. You know what's so funny is like classes are like sitting here laughing and like pointing at Demo like fucking idiot Demo. But then they all know that this spec probably or at least one of the Warlock specs will just end up being better than all of you guys who are pointing and laughing anyway. So... What a world. All right, Arms Warriors. Skull Splitter's immediate expiration of Deep Wounds and Rends caused too much rotational impact and had unintuitive side effects. So, okay, so you bash an enemy's skull. Cool. And it also causes your Deep Wounds to expire instantly. Oh, that's cringe. Okay, so, like, you would basically put up Deep Wounds again, but then, like, Skull Splitter's interaction with the tier was just, like, now I've used Skull Splitter, and I want to maybe press something that would otherwise pop all my dots. 
but now it's like I would want to put them up again so I would get value out of the pop. So it would be, I can kind of see that. So that's the rotational impact and had unintuitive side effects, I think. The redesigned deep wounds and rend interactions should alleviate these issues while providing arms warriors a new way to interact with bleed effects. Okay. So Skull Splitter now causes deep wounds to bleed out more quickly for a short duration, and it was expire instantly. So that way, if they just make the bleed speed up when you proc your tier, it will just blast the rest of the... It'll still have... I mean, that's... Eh. Oh, before you had to thunderclap before and after using Skull Splitter? Yeah, that's super dog shit. Okay. So now you still just slam it. Uh, Tide of Blood. But that also means that, like, Skull Splitter's direct value is nerfed, though, for sure. Like, this is gonna... Isn't this gonna make Skull Splitter feel worse after this tier set is gone and this patch is over, though? Like, wouldn't they need to almost change this again? Or do you think it's just better overall? It feels much better? All right, cool. Tide of Blood now also causes your rend on the target to bleed out 100% faster. What the fuck is Tide of Blood? Is that a talent? I doubt it. Oh, here it is. Skull, yeah. Skull Splitter deals 30% increased damage and cause your Ren to expire instantly. Okay, so they basically just made the same fix for Ren as they did Skull Splitter. It gives us the freedom to slam without worrying about dot time. Okay, what's the dev note here? Ignore Pain's interaction with Rage Spent mechanics has caused its use to deviate from the intent as preemptive mitigation into an offensive rotational ability. We are removing Ignore Pain's interaction with these mechanics and restore it to a purely defensive choice. Rage Spent on Ignore Pain no longer contributes to Anger Management tactician and test of might so okay i see a lot of yeses and nos if i'm gonna guess the people are saying no you're like damn this used to make me like way more tanky because i didn't feel bad about pressing that defensive because it gave me some contribution for that rage towards like you know these these things but for the people who are saying yes you're like okay now i don't have to press ignore pain as much and that makes me happy so it's like two competing camps. Like if you just care about the class's power level, you wish that it still did this for that. Not to mention that I bet Ignore Pain, especially because it's off the GCD, right? It actually allowed you to get bigger windows, right? At least it's off the GCD for Prot. So I assume it's off the GCD for Arms. So I bet like in these windows... Dude, okay, so I can totally see this. This is, this is absolutely... All the yeses and no makes sense. It is people fighting for good gameplay and people fighting for power. You spamming ignore pain, getting extra power, which is, uh, this is probably a damage nerf, right? And it's also like two birds with one stone. You're also like making yourself more tanky. So like the power level loss from this will be not completely insignificant, but you, but you guys who are like focusing on the future of the class are like, are, at least this isn't insanely cringe anymore. The question is though, now that people have been using ignore pain for rage dumping for a while, I wonder how the economy of rage spending feels in the game. Like, because it's been held together, like a band-aid has been the fact that you can use Ignore Pain. I wonder if Blizzard is prepared to, like, give you some other way to dump Rage now. Or maybe this will feel really bad, like, gameplay-wise. Slam time. Dude, I don't pay too much attention to Warrior outside of Prot. But one thing I have learned from you guys over the years is you all fucking hate pressing Slam. <laughs> you all fucking hate that ability, man. Anytime Slam is brought up, people are so mad. Which, I mean, dude, if you're a warrior, you should want to cast slam. You should want to cast slam. Like, think about that as an ability slam. You literally just slam your enemy. You just slam into them. That's sick. Like a, like a beast. Arms, where do you guys think this goes? Arms is feeling real good. But keep in mind that one small change doesn't mean... This, this, this tier list is not as binary as, oh, we got a good change today, we go up. We got a bad change today, we go down. It's all included. So you guys got a quality of life change with the with the skull splitter and the Ren talent under it. And then you also got the ignore pain thing nerf, which you guys were like straight up split on, by the way. Like half of you were straight up just like this fucking sucks and half of you were like this is amazing. So I think I think it's a net neutral. I think arms is like staying up here, still feeling pretty good. Good changes.